you're a motion designer or aspiring motion designer looking for the right laptop for your needs, you're in the right place. We're gonna talk about the most important components and I'm gonna list a bunch of options in the description for various budgets so you can balance what you can afford with what you need it for. For clarity, we're gonna focus on providing enough performance for use with Adobe After Effects and 3D programs like Cinema 4D. Hardware components can often seem wildly complex, and that's because they are. In fact, it was Arthur C. Clarke who said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And who the fuck understands magic, right? But we're gonna cut through the fluff and make it as simple as possible. First, the CPU. To massively oversimplify, CPUs have cores, and when buying, you'll often see clock speed. This is the speed of each core. Programs like After Effects and even Cinema 4D only utilize a single core. So arguably, the most important factor here is clock speed and not the amount of cores. However, since After Effects introduced multi-frame rendering, there's more of a benefit to having multiple cores than there was previously. Then with 3D software, this can get a bit more complicated depending on what you're doing inside the program, so a quick Google search definitely won't hurt. Also, when buying, you may need to distinguish between your base clock speed and your boost clock speed. Your base clock speed is your minimum speed and your boost clock refers to the ability of your CPU to function at higher speeds for short bursts as needed. This is a good thing, you want this. So of course, the higher the base clock speed, the better, but some of the later CPUs with lower base speeds and high boost speeds perform really well in benchmark testing. In general, around four to eight cores with a clock speed of 2.5 gigahertz and up is a good place to start. Now let's talk GPUs. Firstly, your choice here will depend on if you're working more in After Effects or in 3D. In After Effects, your graphics card is slightly less important. However, After Effects has been updated to utilize more VRAM. Video RAM is the dedicated RAM in your graphics card, so opting for a card with higher VRAM at about four to eight gigabytes and up is a good idea. However, fun fact, my first laptop had only two gigabytes of dedicated memory on its graphics card, and I used it for years to create animations. I still sometimes use it now. It's crap though. <laughs> Then, when it comes to Cinema 4D, the above still applies, so a mid-range card is totally fine. However, you may want to consider putting more budget into your graphics card if you're going to be using a GPU renderer, like Octane or Redshift, as this will help a lot to reduce your render times. Now, generally speaking, the performance of NVIDIA cards exceeds AMD cards right now, so let's just make your decision easier by focusing on laptops with NVIDIA GPUs. Now, onto RAM. Right off the bat, in my opinion, 16 gigabytes is the bare minimum, with the ideal being 32 gigabytes and up. For After Effects, the higher the better, as this helps massively with previews. Also, check the data transfer rate and generation of your RAM. However, more slightly slower RAM is better than less really fast RAM, so decide based on your budget. Finally, we're gonna talk about storage. There are three different options to consider when it comes to storage. HDD, SSD, and NVMe. And in terms of read and write speeds, we can rank them according to Zanpakuto in Bleach as sealed, shikai, and bankai. Or in layman's terms, good, better, best. SSDs have really reduced in price, and in a laptop, there's no reason not to go with an SSD. Ideally, an NVMe SSD, as the speeds are way faster than your standard SSDs. Now, in an ideal world, your laptop would have at least two different SSDs, so that you could run your operating system and applications on one of them, and then have your project files and media cache on the other. But this is uncommon in laptops, so your best bet is to go for a high-speed NVMe with a decent amount of size. I would suggest between 512 gigabytes as a bare minimum, with the ideal being around one gigabyte and up. And that's it for your crash course on computer hardware. But I also wanna quickly mention a few final things to look out for when buying a laptop. These are your non-performance considerations that will not affect your motion design directly, but are important to think about. Please drop a like on this video if it's been helpful. And as I mentioned, there is a link to a bunch of laptop options in the description that I would personally consider if I was about to buy a new laptop. I set it up this way so I can keep updating this list as time goes on and as technology improves. So you're always accessing up-to-date options. So check it out now. FYI, these are affiliate links. So purchasing through these links will help support the channel at no cost to you. So be sure to take a look right now.